Hi, this is Darren with strumpatterns.com, and in this video we're going to take a look at Transcribe by 7th String. And what this software does is it allows you to take audio or video and allows you to loop different portions of it as well as slow the tempo down or speed it up without affecting the pitch. You can also independently change the pitch as well as other things such as a karaoke feature which helps to remove vocals and EQ settings that will help you to also uh, further remove different instruments so you can focus more on hearing a specific instrument that you're working on. It's a really powerful piece of software and I'm really excited about it because I use this all the time. So with that being said, let's take a look. Okay, so here we are inside the Transcribe main window. And this is Transcribe version 8. And I've already loaded a video file for us to use. And this is Fusions by Eric Mongrain. And real quickly, I just want to take a second to thank Eric and his management for allowing me to use his video in the making of this video. And so if you like his music and want to check it out further, I have links included on my YouTube uh, page if you're watching on that, or if you're watching this on my website, strumpatterns.com, there's more information there for you. Okay, so I've already opened up a video file, and I did that by selecting here, Import Sound File. And that will both allow you to open up audio or video files. Okay, and that opened up this WAV file here. All right, so this window here is the WAV format, and this is where you're going to see and make most of your edits. Down here, this is the spectral view, and this tells you what frequencies are found in whatever selections that you make. And then down below, these are the pitch view. So this is the corresponding pitch to these frequencies. And then here it's giving you a guess as to if you play these three pitches that it hears predominantly in this particular section of music, that if you played an F major 7 chord, that should be what you're hearing there. If you're working on your ear tuning and trying to figure out what kind of chords are in a song, this can be a really nice feature to help you do that. Down below is the transport window, and here you have the play, pause, stop, fast forward, and rewind buttons. You have the speed and the tempo change slider here. You have a transpose pitch transposition slider here. You have a volume slider, and this is your zoom slider. So you can zoom in or out on your waveform. And then this is the track length and your current position within the song. Okay, so it's just a matter of pointing and clicking in the window and then pushing play. To do that, you could push play down here, but I like to use a lot of keyboard shortcuts, so I used the space bar there, and that will both start and stop so that you don't have to use your mouse. And then another way, you can just select a certain area and then if I hit play, it's just going to play the selected area. And then, so that you can hear that, I'm going to hit play. And now if I enable the loop, that'll just loop that same section over and over again. And real quickly, this is the shortcuts window. All the things up here uh, are things that you'll use quite frequently, but are also found in other spots within the software. So we've selected an area, we've turned the loop on and off. Also, you can have the scroll on or off so that uh, here it is with it on. So the window moves as it plays. If I turn that off, notice the wave file stops moving. And then once it gets beyond the window, you just won't see the, the position any further. Another way of making a selection instead of just dragging is when it's playing, you can hit the A and B loop here. And when that happens, if you once you hit it once, that's the start point for the loop, and then you hit it a second time, and that'll be the end point for the loop. So here we go. And you can see that that set the loop up and then repeated it. And it automatically starts looping that way. Then from there, you can change the tempo of your song. 
There it is at 70. There it is at 50. Let's jump down to 25. All right, there it is at 25%. So one of the things I want to point out is the clarity of the sound at this 25% because most of the software that I've tried, they don't have that kind of clarity at all. If you even go to 66% or 70%, it becomes so garbled and mangled that it's hard to hear what's going on, whereas you can still hear what's going on pretty clearly at 25% with this. The only other program that does this kind of thing that sounds as good as Transcribe does is the Amazing Slowdown by Roni, which is a pretty good program in itself. However, it doesn't have all the features that Transcribe has, so I prefer Transcribe transcribe to the amazing slowdown or myself and they are at the same price point so I would myself opt for transcribe uh, even though I used the amazing slowdowner for years the amazing slowdowner does have however the iPhone and iPad apps available so if you have those that would be something to look at and you can pick that up for pretty cheap I think it's like 10 bucks 15 bucks for that so that you have that on your iPhone and you can use anything in your iTunes library to do this with so if that's interesting to you then I will also include that link on the website and on the YouTube account Okay, that being said, the quality of this is really good at 25%. So another thing to notice is as I hit this 70% up here, it changes the speed slider down here, 50%, and it changes down here again. I can also manually select down here if I want something in between and not just 100 or 35 or whatever these presets are up here. I can do it that way. Also, if I want to get outside of the 0 to 100% range, if I want to go faster, I can go into the FX box here and select the speed tab here. And now I can either type in my tempo that I want here or the percentage that I want here. And then I could also use this slider here and I can go up to 200% here. That same section now at 200%. Okay, and let's say I found I wanted to work at 182, but for a minute I just wanted to hear what the original sound like. I can hit this bypass. And that will take you back to the original tempo. But that way I can keep the, uh, the altered speed if I want. So that's the basics of getting around. So now, if you notice, I have up here this A and this B marker, and I've pre-made those, and that's another way of navigating around by setting up different section markers. Once I have these section markers created, all I have to do is hold down the Alt key and then use the square brackets, which are just above the Enter key. So there I was just jumping back and forth between the three different sections and the end by using those section markers. And to create a section marker, there's several different ways of doing that. I can right click and I can select new section marker and then I can drag that to wherever I'd like that to be. And then I can also convert that to one of the other forms of markers, whether it's the measure or beat marker. And I can also delete this marker and I can edit the marker to change the label and do some other various things there. Also, I can set a marker up here by saying new section marker. And then if I type the letter S, that will also add a section marker. And it's going to ask me, if I'm not in the middle of playing, it's going to bring up this dialog box and it's going to ask me, do I want at the paused playback point, which is the I beam, wherever that's at, or at the current point. And this triangle represents wherever the current point is. So that's how you can do that manually. Or if it's playing, there I was just typing the S key on my keyboard, and that created new section markers as I went along. I don't actually want those in there for now. You have section markers, and there are also beat markers and measure markers. And I can add those in the exact same way and to use the keyboard shortcuts, if you type the letter M, that'll give you a measure marker. Type a B, and that'll give you the beats marker. 
and I'm going to do that in real time here so you can see how that works. Oops. Let's do that again. And then once I have the different measures and beat markers, I can select across that like that. Then I can hit markers and select compute tempo. And then it's going to tell me over the 16 markers that I've created, the tempo is 91 beats per minute. And that's real handy to know. Uh, and that way I don't have to try to compute the tempo by hand. Also, if I have a speed selector like this, and then I select the compute tempo. Not only is it going to tell me the original tempo is 91.0, but it's also going to tell me that with the speed alteration I have set, which in this case is 70, this becomes 63.7 beats per minute. So that can be a real handy tool, especially as a teacher. I use this with my students whenever I'm trying to figure out a metronome marking that they might be comfortable performing this instead of the original tempo. If I know they're about comfortable around the 70% marker, then I can figure out, okay, they need to set their metronome for about 64 beats per minute. And that can be a real handy tool that way. Lastly, if I set other measure markers here, Notice that uh, it labels it according to what section you're in. So if this is section B, then that's B2, B3, B4. And these measures were A2, A3, A4. And that's really it for the different markers that you have available.